All right, guys, welcome back to the show. We are here with the Grammy nominated Swedish duo Galantis. We got Christian in the house, we got Linus in the house, and they got a new album out called The Aviary. So come check it out. It's out today, Friday, September 15th. I think it's a day. Kind of lost track of time. But <laughs> welcome yeah. to the show, guys. Real pleasure uh, meeting you guys. Thank here. you. Real Thanks pleasure for having us. Like, for sure, for sure. It's a crazy week for you guys, hey? Yeah, yeah. Well, congrats on the album and for that to come out. Um, and I guess we would love to hear from you guys and the, hear the stories of the beginnings of the, how it happened because you guys have had really successful careers before forming the Jewish duo. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for the people that may not know, what was the kind of the reason for you guys to get together? Because you guys had worked with some of the biggest artists, you know, from Madonna, Britney Spears, Usher, Zed. What was the kind of the reasoning for you guys to come together and form a duo? Well, it, it all started with um, uh, I'm also in a band called Mike Snow, yes. uh, and we um, were about to put out our first album and the first single, Animal. And I reached out to Linus, um, who is also Style of I, and was one of my favorite DJs. Um, and um, I didn't know him personally, but we were really kind of in the same, you know, we had in common friends, stuff like that, you know, yeah. but um, uh, but I reached out and he wanted to remix it and we met in the studio. And that's kind of the birth of why we're sitting here right now. Because mm -hmm. it was something when we met, like the way I like to work in the studio, there's an energy, right? The way yeah. you, when you create music, it's very uh, intimate, you know, you, you have to share all your ideas and stuff. So it's like... It's a meeting every time when you try to, uh, you know, write with a new person or something. Sure. So there was something uh, um, uh, with me and Linus in the studio that was uh, just uh, clicked, yeah. you know. So we said first, we said like, we didn't say like, oh, let's start a band uh, <laughs> or whatever. We, uh, we just wanted to, you know, hook up more and listen to music and talk about whatever, you know, touring, mm. you know, like, you, you know, just, you know, life. It was a general. very, very, I don't know if you remember, but it was very long like <laughs> time uh, probably a year where we just try to get in the studio yeah we were always mm. on tour yeah if you weren't on tour and you were home for like one day yeah and i was home yeah you know we tried it and then we started you know doing a lot of instrumentals just yeah playing around the studio with samples and old tracks and you know it take that took a long time actually. sure yeah. so you guys seems like you guys were just hanging out as friends yeah. you like being together you guys had similar interests and yeah. you just yeah. wanted to jam yeah, yeah. I, I started to like do a lot of like Mike Snow DJ sets um, and you know the in the in this uh, Stockholm dance music, music scene we were both really close to like Sebastian Grosso Steve Angelo all those guys and just like uh, being in that environment, I just wanted to do more dance music. I already had one part dance music in Mike Snow, but it wasn't enough. I just wanted, wanted more, more, right? Yeah, so yeah, first, when me and Linus started uh, working in the studio, there was like no like songwriting. It was just only beats, only like going oh, really, beats. Hard, okay. really hard, really hard. And then punk, yeah. Because <laughs> <actually. Yeah. laughs> we're everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, but but it was like the, we needed to start somewhere. And yeah. then all of a sudden, it's like, wait, why aren't we using all our tools? <laughs> like, mm. we, you know, we've been writing songs for like a long time. Why don't we write songs? And then we like dress them up in some dance music clothing, and you know, we start a real thing, not only. Because in the beginning, we were all about just the jams in the studio, mm. <laughs> pretty yeah, much. Just hanging out. Yeah. But so, yeah, so I think Smile was the first uh, song that we felt like, okay, this feels like Christian and Linus and, and Galantis, you know. So. Gotcha. And yeah. was it, and both of you guys can answer separately as well, was there something that you guys saw in each other where perhaps it was a complementary skill set that you guys you know, one, one was much better at this and I knew why I wanted to compliment because that's kind of like in business as well, like one's maybe more analytical yeah. or not more operations focused, well, one has... Yeah, you know, I mean, for, for I think for, for me it was, uh, I, I felt very limited in, in, in the techno community that, yeah. where, that I came from. Sound I wanted like to, it. yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not song based in that sense, it's very track based and I felt like I've, I'd, I'd done that for a long time and Christian comes from the you know, uh, 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 more song. He, he was producing and writing, and and uh, the mix mix of this was was the sort of in for Galantis. You know, so mm. for me, I, I I needed that challenge, and uh, 
you know, I needed someone to 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 pair up with, and uh, w- yeah, it, it was just like we always say that it, it was a road, a long road to lead up to what Galantis became to be. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Smile was a was a really tough tough one, and we we still like, oh man, the mix down is not that great. <laughs> you know, all that we we always you know look at it from an angle where how can we make it a little bit better? How can mm-hmm. we make it cleaner? Yeah, you know, but it still was a st- it was our start and when, when when you say limited do you mean that it was mostly focusing on beats but you know you guys were very lyrical focused so is that what the missing puzzle when you were working in previous uh, band no, that was that was i mean for me it, at, at least it's not very you know common to do a lot of vocals mm. uh, you know to play vocal songs and you know, when you when you're doing a set at panorama bar or whatever sure, sure. and I wanted to explore. So. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get into the whole, you know, th- th- how you guys really differentiate yourselves from other mm-hmm. bands. Cause I think it's really interesting. Um, the question that I had was also because you guys have such experience just coming before Galantis, mm-hmm. and you guys bring your own experience and your own kind of lessons, I guess, that you've learned from your past. When you guys are in the studio together, how do you guys come up with lyrics and decisions together? Because most band, you know, most DJ groups, it's really just one person, so they're just flowing mm. individually. Yeah. How do you guys decide, you know, the final decision, and how does the creative process work when you're working together, and how do you deal with conflicts? I guess. I think we just try to keep it open all the time, and we don't really have like conflicts because we're just trying to make the best um, song possible, and we let the song guide us where it wants to go. Mm. Um, which means like we s- always let like uh, chord progression, melody, lyric be like the first uh, to come about and then we know that um, all the years in the studio previous those tools we know we can dress it up in mm. a different type of production mm. so, so let's not fight about that we can, we can do that so let's just focus on what is the best melody chord progression you know tempo like the um, like we're trying to find like it's like I call it a motor you know what is the motor in this song you know like uh, find that first and then and then we know we're gonna do a hundred versions anyway <laughs> so let's why like now take out like oh we should go here and here let's just do and work on it and then change our minds in it 100 times and then yeah. when it's actually time to release it then we make up our minds and you know and, and that's always the hardest part right. you know to know when it's finished uh, so, well, it's, yeah. I yeah, think so. I think one thing we have in common is that we both played around with a lot of samples as, uh, you know, kids. And, yeah. and yeah. They, you made a lot of hip hop. And, yeah. I, you know, I dabbled with that and did a lot of drum bass and jungle. And that's like how how we sort of look at a song, too. We mm. we want to we know what if we want to make a dance record, it can't be, you know, maybe <laughs> it can't be eight chords so it can't be like a long loop if, if you sure. want to be in it you know mm-hmm. for a long time so yeah and perhaps you guys have the experience at a point now so you know you understand how the entire process works so perhaps because of that there's less disagreements because you know the yeah, final y- product yeah and you can uh, really early see where something is going mm-hmm. like in here like okay I know where this is you know gonna go let's yeah. like try to see if we can find another path already now because we're gonna get mad for all the investments we did <laughs> and then it's gonna end up here sure. and it might be good but it's just not good enough mm. you know so just kill it or like just find another road right now or it, like, it, leave it hurts it. but yeah. it's great because yeah. it saves you a week of work yeah, yeah it's yeah, just yeah, gonna right, hurt right. more later yeah. so uh, <laughs> uh, Love but it. yeah so that's like uh, that's something I think it's just from um, experience and spending a lot of time uh, writing in the studio you, you learn that sure sure and because of the experience that you guys have had I- are there any particular musical influencers or just any influence that you guys have modeled you know what you guys do here at Galantis after influences I mean I don't know I feel like uh, there's probably so many like uh, I think uh, that just um uh, dance music in itself is a beast you know like it's so much music coming out it's always changing and needs to be changing yeah. i felt like there was a, a time you know that where it wasn't changing enough 
Uh, but now I feel it's open again and people are really trying to explore. Uh, and I think that's the like an inspiration and influence in itself, just being in dance music. And now, uh, I mean, we're really proud to be a part of, you know, uh, where the ship is going, not completely, but one part, you sure, know, like sure. people might listen to what we're doing and, and, uh, cause it's also an amazing community dance music, like, cause we play each other's music, mm, you know, all the, right. yeah, 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 like we're, we're sending each other music and like, oh, can I remix that? Can you send me the acapella, send me the instrumental? We support each other. It's pretty amazing. If you compare it to like, I mean, <laughs> I don't think uh, like Oasis would start playing Blur songs or something, you know. Like uh, it's yeah. it's you know it's a different thing. This mm -hmm. genre is uh, it's really beautiful. I gotta say that yeah. that I mean, thing. You don't hear comedians like telling each other <laughs> no, jokes. Joke. Like, <laughs> that's a good song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's my joke, man. Yeah. You don't do that. But this is more sharing. Hey, send me that joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, don't Can make my joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so here's a lyric. Here's a quote that I actually thought was really interesting, and I'm not sure which one of you guys said it, but you said, "We keep the song naked." And when we feel like we have the right one, we put some clothes on it and see how it feels. Mm -hmm. So, what it, can you guys talk a little bit about what that means and and kind of what that represents or what Galantis is about? Yeah, that well, that's that goes back to like the like um, to focus on the actual song in itself and not like 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 most songs for Galantis in the beginning they were all like ballads. You know, because we're only focusing on uh, melody, lyric, and chord progression, and then and then it's like, okay, now we have all types of options. You know, to how to dress this up. Yeah. Like, are we gonna go, uh, you know, house tempo? We're gonna do a little slower. What kind of drop? What kind of like? There's so many options if you have that, you know, tune. You yeah. know, you got it. But sometimes it's it hurts. It takes a long time to find the right. You know, but. I think this is one of the our strengths is that we never give up because we go at it until we break it. Mm. You know, even if it doesn't even make the deadline for the album, it's in the drawer. <laughs> we're gonna pick it up again. Okay. Believe me, we're gonna solve it. Very <laughs> yeah. Is that like a Swedish thing or something? I don't know. <laughs> I, think, I think I think because we had a few songs like uh, that was really um, hard to figure out. Like Runaway was impossible. It was like three songs. Hmm. Couldn't make it sound like one song, but we didn't give up on it. And then it became one of our like big, you know, huge song yeah. for us, you because know. It's so different from other songs. Yeah, and it's like we learned something from that. That's like okay, let's like never like if we feel we got something, and it's like we're hitting the wall, you know. Like we just we just need to tw you know find an angle and get in and and then uh, solve the puzzle. Mm. There's always uh, you know something you could do to make it work. Sure, you know? sure. Yeah, we never give up. <laughs> I love it. And you guys are, I mean, really what seems like what differentiates you guys is that you guys are starting with the ballad first, mm -hmm. whereas the, I guess a lot of the other DJs or a lot of other musicians, it's kind of the other way around. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for them, but I, th I it's, it, sometimes it, it's, it's, that sounds like it's, it's starting with tracks, you know, mm -hmm. which, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I definitely don't have anything against, so I'm not hating on it. I just feel like for us, it's, it's harder to work it's a little bit backward you right. know because it's it's uh, it's hard to bend uh, melodies and lyric around the track mm. you know it's very easy to build a track around melody and lyric you know right. that you have all the options you can you know how you dress it up just sure, like all sure, dress sure. it up but if you if you have it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but if you have uh, if you have a track um, and then you're, you're trying to write to it there's there's you know it's harder to find the perfect match how the melody is going to flow in between all those obstacles in the track that's mm. in the way for your your melody you know it's like oh i wanted it to go to a different chord here like i want you know then you know, like it's very hard to just start it's like a, a, recreating the track yeah. right sure. there sure. Uh, feeling uh, that it's forced you yeah know? you force it into something that's yeah really and then of course there is you can like, change the track mm. but you can't change it fast enough for me to write anyway, because mm. it needs to be like this. Because you're, you're uh, when you're in a writing mode, all your ideas are like flying past you. Sure. You have that's why it's like it's good to even record all the time. Because you like, yeah. oh, I had it, and then it's like it's gone. It's like where did it go? <laughs> where is so it? Where is we'll it? Get something on the <laughs> we got this. <laughs> but it's all about. I feel it's all about. Um, 
I mean, it's a cliche, but actually it's a good one because Quincy said it the first time. It's about catching the magic. And that's what I think it's all about. Because mm-hmm. there's no logic to songwriting. Mm. If you're thinking that it is logic and math to it, I think you're on the wrong path of making music, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I don't think that I don't think good music comes out that way. Great. Yeah. Great. And with the, between the two of you guys, do you guys both do the lyricals or is it one person? We don't have roles, but I mean, um, I, and I don't think we sh- like. I think a part of being Galantis is that we want to push ourselves into doing things that we haven't done before. Mm. So we're just trying to whatever you know, whatever works. Sure. You know, it's like. Uh, you know, and and of course we collaborate a lot. You know we have a great team of friends that we keep on going back to working with um, songwriters and and uh, um, so it's like uh, we're just trying to keep keep it completely open and not like oh you do that I do that whatever yeah yeah you know because I think if you start a song from the same uh, like uh, uh, yeah exactly like blueprint. It's very hard to come up with something that's original and fresh for yourself. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't start a new song the way we did Runaway or No Money, because mm. I don't think we can beat those in the same with the same blueprint. I think we'd need to do a new one every time to have the shot at doing something cool, new, and fresh, which hurts, because yeah. you think, okay, I got it. <laughs> Let's do it again. Uh, I'm, it never worked for for for, for us mm, to do yeah. that. It's just gonna be a like a a weaker version of the other one if you started that way. That's what I I learned. But maybe other people have a different yeah. you know, opinion. But yeah, that's really interesting. So yeah. every song you guys start with a blank slate, and it's a yes. completely new process. It puts a lot of yeah. pressure on you guys, I'm sure. Yeah, but you just need to. Sometimes you need to be uh, limit yourself a bit and be like, okay, let's. Let's decide right now that we're going to use and then we pick an instrument that we haven't used. <laughs> you know wow. what I'm saying? Because yeah. that will like push you in somewhere where you haven't been before. That's you know? great. Yeah. Um, I've heard that Louis C.K., one of the greatest comedians, with the reason why he has really risen to the top, and he's been at this for years, but what he does is he puts his closing bit, which is supposed to be his best bit, and whenever he's trying to challenge himself, he puts that in the beginning. Oh. So he's gonna fuck, you yeah. know. He's gonna figure <laughs> something out, and yeah. that's the kind of pressure that really makes you become, you know, great at your craft. So it sounds yeah. like that's gonna be a similar path that yeah. you guys are taking as well. Yeah, sure. uh, I mean, you just have to, you have to, have to dare and uh, to push yourself there, mm. you know. And I think that's uh, goes together with that. We've been doing it for a long time, and uh, that's like, there's there's no definitely no time to waste now. We want to just try to do stuff we haven't done before yeah you, you guys know? are in like 25 though no yeah 20 <laughs> soon soon, soon, soon. Coming, yeah. coming up <laughs> old enough um, old enough <laughs> talk to me a little bit about the tools or specific you know resources that you guys use when you guys are in the studio i know tambourine is a big common <laughs> good catch though, yeah that's a good mm. catch what, what software do you guys use is it, is it like ableton is it you know what are some of the things that maybe I mean, we are both Logic uh, guys, um, but we have uh, worked on a lot of different software. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. What did you start with? I started Cubase, but yeah, when did you start I first, I first? I cakewalk. Cakewalk. <laughs> oh, no, oh my God. Cakewalk. That's amazing. Cakewalk to Cubase to Logic. Oh, you did Cubase? Yeah, I did. Cubase Logic is pretty. Like yeah, yeah. Pretty, they're pretty that similar, early, actually. That was early. Yeah, yeah. great. Hmm. And then we'll be struggling with Pro Tools. Pro Tools. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have Pro Tools all the time yeah. involved. Yeah. But it's like Pro Tools is like the most professional tool. Fa- fast mm. tracker. <laughs> 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 but to me, it's not... So Okay, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to say this to the camera. All the Pro Tools guys are going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I just think that yeah. to me I don't know but it's because you're stuck sometimes you get stuck in one program and you know their program so well so it's very hard to know how it is for someone that knows Pro Tools as well as we would know Logic because yeah. mm-hmm. uh, to us it's just faster and it might not be the uh, like as you know good in certain areas but it's fast and sometimes and it, it's very you can get in uh, very creative modes really quickly mm. <laughs> this is actually uh, 
a, like something I would say a few years ago because then we've been stuck in one uh, you know so oh. it's probably changed a sure, lot so sure, now probably sure. Pro Tools is freaking amazing yeah, I'm sure at, at, sure at, sure at, at the exactly but that's like you I think also like you're you're getting into a certain way of using a tool mm. and then I mean for me I learned something like um if you have a tool and you know how to use that tool, why trying to just change the tool all the, all the time? Mm. And if you know how that works, because you're trying to like create music, so I just want to have this thing where I know sure. how it works, you sure. know, to get to somewhere. Unless the tool is like a creative tool, like a new tool that I haven't experienced before. But mm. if it's just gonna move one like you know note to another place. Right. Like then, I don't care if you're using Cakewalk or like Fruity Loops or matter. whatever. Okay. It doesn't matter. You you really yeah. want to yeah. forget what yeah. that you're actually in uh, something. You know I that you're in a program. Right? Yeah, you just want to be listening to what's yeah. going on. So and I think this is interesting. it's interesting in technology now because as as, as as much as it's going forward all the time. I think we also see that it goes back where we mm. try to get stuff that like doesn't do everything mm. like you know what I'm saying <laughs> sure, like I was sure. people start to hate the phone it's like how do I call on this shit <laughs> <Yeah>. you know yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just too many options yeah, yeah so VR, that's like yeah. in music too it's like this mm. synth only does like like three sounds but mm. and there's only like three buttons but they, it does it amazing you know and like you limit yourself instead of like going through a billion sounds like mm. you know what I'm saying it's like it's cool to have uh, go back a bit, you know? It, yeah. yeah. It's like I, I could listen to stuff that I did like a long time ago where it was uh, like an MPC 60 or MPC yeah. 2000, you know, where yeah. where you didn't have a computer or something. Else okay. You have your, your you know, your 16 sounds. Yeah. And it's all about that. Uh, instead of like just going through 200 kick drums, sometimes just waste it's just wasting your time and not doing sure. anything you know sometimes sure. going and limit yourself a bit might open up uh and and be a better way to to create yeah i mean so sometimes you just have too many it's like being at a restaurant you have like 200 things you want to order but just like give me three things you know don't yeah. you yeah. love a restaurant that <laughs> just like hey we got one thing but it's amazing have and that. you know they do it super yeah, well yeah exactly like, okay yeah, yeah. It makes sense like how can you do 200 things really well <laughs> exactly things, right? and, it, and we're yeah. importing like the MPC like functions into logic yeah because we want that sort of quantizing groove that sure. th that's made from that because that oh sampling, it's you know? yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and that's that's cool because it's like what it does actually uh, that it's not perfect yeah mm. mm. That's the thing you want, yeah. cause it's like a little bit before the beat or behind the beat, never right. on the beat. Right, right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no math or like logic to it. Like, why is that so good when it's not perfect? Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it took. I think it took a long time before people even they really got why like that grew from an MPC uh, 60 was so magical. Mm -hmm. It was because it wasn't a computer. It was more playing a drum padding like a human because a human isn't perfect like sure. you can't you sure. know you're you on you're on live, so he's a good drummer yeah. he's a really good drummer he's a good drummer <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a good drummer <laughs> I just drum really hard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mu you make the music last talk to me about the creative process and the routines you guys have before mm -hmm. you go in the studio or if you don't have one maybe you can reflect on your most creative periods and what are some of the routines you did before that to get into that mindset? Like going up on stage, you mean? Or uh, just when you guys are in the creation mode, whether it's writing, whether it's be producing, do you guys have a routine you do to get into the creative flow? Uh, not for not, not really. for writing and stuff. That's it's just like uh, ten o'clock. See yeah. you there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's like yeah, that it could be anything. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you already like you have an idea before you open the door in the studio. Sometimes you're just listening to music together and mm. be like, you know, and then listening to new music, old music, whatever. Um, uh, that uh, we don't really need. It's almost like we need the opposite. We need to be able to turn off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a problem, actually. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, you know, you want to always create music, uh, but for for the stage. Um, um, you sometimes you're in you know, the lack of sleep and all the traveling and, yeah. and you know um, you might need to go in and 
trying to get somewhere in your head mm. and we both do a bunch of different things it's it's one thing we, we always do is just we all we both like walk back and forth and just stare <laughs> into nothing and it's like there's like a focus you're trying to go through what's going to happen you know what we're going to do what we're going to play where we are and to just be you know get in the moment yeah. uh and be get ready for it mm. and then this at the same time you get up there and um there's something that just happens uh, when when that bass and that kick comes in that's like almost uh, like a tribal feeling you know like the same I don't know you see a baby you know a newborn baby move to a kick drum you know like you know it's like something is in you that yeah, thing kicks in yeah, yeah wakes yeah. you up it doesn't matter how how sleepy you actually are you know mm. how nervous you are there's something that wakes you up and wants to move to that beat and then the adrenaline the endorphins like help you just you know wake up yeah yeah but th it's funny you know it's gonna happen you know that's gonna go down you know you're gonna you're gonna be fine but still you're walking back and forth before the show and like trying to focus and getting ready and being some somewhat nervous every time yeah. right? I, I mean with all the preparations for a show i feel like that we can talk about it a week before the show and then it's like yeah yeah we'll do this and then like maybe a day or the same day then we're like dude we're actually gonna play this show tomorrow <laughs> tonight you know and then we end up changing a lot because we you know yeah. you, you have you need that for yourself and you mm. need to you know feel like you're you're giving something special sure yeah. Yeah. sure and are you guys um al like do you guys have alone time before you go up on stage where you I don't know, do you guys do meditation or anything like that? Or are you guys always together and just kind of chit-chatting what the game plan is as well, a group? Linus is a you know, meditating man. <laughs> he's, he's, he gets in, he does a lot of that stuff. What kind of meditation do you do? I, well, all right. <laughs> yeah, tell the world. <laughs> Vipassana. Vipassana, okay. Yeah, Vipassana, Very yeah. cool. I did a yeah, I did day Vipassana course a well. uh, long time ago. Same with me. Sell oh, meditation. really? Yeah, I did no. in Hawaii. Wow. Yeah, it was a weird experience though. It's like forty-year-old man crying and tense, and <laughs> wow. his, uh, this is gonna end up being a side like note of this <laughs> video. So yeah. we're gonna have a little section of <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I think people no. would love to hear your process, right? Well, so. th it's not like we, you know, it's everything is so full on when you're on the festival or when you're out there, and we, we're doing a lot of. It's a lot of PR and and you know people to meet and and uh, if you want to be able to sort of pump yourself up but we try to get a few minutes before each show where we you know just wander around backstage and yeah yeah, uh, yeah. It, you know, it's funny because sometimes you're in exactly that state mm. and exactly that moment you meet someone that you have to talk to uh, I don't know it could be from the label it could be someone else but you're in that mindset mm. so you're like really not there you know sure, like you sure. know because you're already, already about to go on stage it's like the worst because this gets like really awkward I can't get out of it you know and you know, become like really social because I'm already in that like somewhere else you you're know focusing yeah 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 for me too even before the interview is like I can't just sit and wait I have to be doing something yeah, yeah. you yeah. know you got to be walking around yeah. and be in the right mindset yeah absolutely uh, are there particular drinks or food you guys I know like Rihanna apparently she eats like Oreos and she drinks Grey Goose vodka before <laughs> she goes up on the stage every <sighs> single time uh, do you guys have anything like that you guys consume or, or drink or eat before you guys go up or is it different every time uh well d you tend to, I, I didn't even think about it but i i think i drink kind of the same thing every night yeah but still not mm. I, I think the less rules you have the the easier it gets to tour you mm. know because you're gonna end up uh, before a show i don't i we should change like your writer up more <laughs> yeah i don't feel like you have that you know you're, you're changing it up all the time well i'm trying like i'm trying to t like you know have like if there is a domestic beer, give me that. If there is a, like well, a local <laughs> local wine, give me that. <laughs> they, you, know? you never get huh. that. They yeah. always import it. So, but <laughs> I do always have like a beer and a glass of wine. Right before. Yeah. Yeah. Beer and. You like to mix it up, eh? <laughs> you daredevil. <laughs> um, That's yeah. what Swedish people do. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well, I, w I think wine is the wine that really helps me out. The beer is because mm. I'm always hungry, so. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotcha. <laughs> Um, so obviously when you guys are performing and I've seen your guys' live shows, uh, you know, on YouTube and you guys just go nuts, you're jumping around, you guys are playing the drums and yeah. I mean, you, it's probably easy to get injured. 
I imagine. Yeah. Or maybe not. So do you guys do any training or exercises to prevent injuries when you guys are jumping around and going around these crazy kicks well, on tours? The, the the thing is that we're we're actually it's true we injure ourselves all the time so now like we're basically in rehab all the time like mm. trying to fix something that's broken yeah so it's actually it's a problem bec- i think it's kind of st- it feels stupid like that you walk off and like why am i hurting in like so many places but i think it's because all the adrenaline and endorphins like you don't feel when you're when you're doing yeah. something wrong you know yeah, with your yeah. body when you're like drumming and hitting your hand over and over again in some spot of the drum it's like why am i you're going like this or like uh it's like my uh, my hip is like fucked and like you've been having a lot of problems with your my foot f- foot yeah, yeah it's like ankle and yeah that's that's it just takes a lot of time for it to heal mm. and the problem is with with like really to try and uh, make you know balanced again is it's it's so hard when you're on tour all the time you sure. have another show yeah so you because one know. injury could technically yeah. you know, prevent you guys from yeah. future tours and stuff right no, yeah, I mean, not just completely. Really it's more like the you know you have to change what you're doing on stage a bit, you right. know, uh, or or you do it well, you shouldn't do it, and you know, uh, the injury might get worse. But um, I don't think yeah. we ever canceled the show because of any. Like no, we passed diseases. out like straight after. after show, yeah, yeah right. with, like you it's wake up with an ice pack in your <laughs> neck, oh yeah. yeah, and like and then like. Right. <laughs> um, but um. The thing is with the injuries, though, it's like they keep on coming back. Right. Yeah, so they, they fix it. you fix it, and then it comes back. Mm. And it's like, yeah. Do you guys regularly work out or do any sort of exercises? I mean, that's, uh, I mean, I think we both really, really enjoy um, working out. And I, I love the gym. Yeah. It's just that when you start touring, there's no, there's absolutely there's no, no gym time. No, no and schedule. also, though, that, that 90 minute thing on stage we do is like two gym you know <laughs> visits yeah. it's, um, marathon, uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah it's crazy so, <laughs> so yeah but there <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh yeah i mean but uh, every time uh, i got time off uh, that's the first thing i like do is, like, mm. go back to the gym and try sure to, yeah sure um so when you guys are on tour or when you guys were playing at these different festivals i imagine because just the vast audience you guys play for there are certain audiences that are familiar with your music, they know your history, and they know exactly what tune you were in. But on the other end, there may be people that have never heard of your music before. Mm. So yeah. when you know that information ahead of time, how do you guys change the formatting or the setting of how you guys perform? Is, it, is there a different song order, different songs that you guys play in general, different performance routines? How do you guys change it up, or is it the same every time? We like to have it open mm. and change it up. Um, sometimes we just wish we didn't want to change it up all the time because it's, it's like the, the last minute before we go on, we might like, oh shit, we should do this or that, yeah. and it causes you know problems. But also, it's something we we always want to have that you know um, option. option. Yeah, I actually also believe that some type of like danger, like like something can go wrong, as it keeps you really on your toes and enjoying sure. the show sure. that's why we like to have instruments and do stuff and try stuff uh, and you learn from oh shit we shouldn't do that let's try this instead you know something is um, you know evolving mm-hmm. from it um, and from like uh, like comparing like a, like a mix festival with a dance music festival or a headline show at the venue there are definitely um differences how we prepare yeah. you know uh th- i wouldn't say they're huge but uh there's like you when you go into um a venue you're playing for your own like people that paid money to only see you sure you can take them a little bit on a further like journey mm. and they'll be there ready to try and explore it and you know and they're down for it you you know you might not do the same like at the same depth you know for for a mixed festival you know yeah, you might yeah, like let's yeah. you know play our songs let's try some new stuff and like keep it like in a certain pace maybe you don't have the same amount of like um time to make them go somewhere you know sure. like you can on the, on the, on your own shows but uh, though 
we don't prefer either they're like kind of like helping each other actually like we yeah. take stuff from the festival sets and we throw them in the headline mm -hmm. sets and the opposite so yeah. Yeah. it's not it's not you know white or black you know sure sure so, so i guess you guys play your, like your most popular hits when it's at a mixed festival just <coughs> although we always play time. those but uh yeah there's like we you can go places um in 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 your own like headline sets that yeah. you might not go as far for the for the mixed crowd you sure, know sure sure but um so i want to talk about promotion a little bit when you guys are creating music because you guys have one of the most like unique vi music videos <laughs> you know, that you see on youtube oh, thank you uh, i'm curious to know what your involvement is with the creation process because i feel like it's a completely different beast mm. yeah. right to be able to be in charge of that so do you guys have someone that you guys rely on to create and envision the music video process or you know how involved are you guys with the process i mean we love that part it's mm -hmm. like uh, this is that's one of the reasons we wanted to to do galantis and, and also be artists like it's like um it's to to be able to to choose and be uh, involved in all of that in that process mm. like um like building the C Fox was as important and as fun to create this first song, you know, like the the first sound, so go yeah. like this, and uh, and I, I love the branding part of of it, and uh, so it's like the videos. We of course work together with directors. Uh, we have ideas, and 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 we usually pick the one that are like up for like really <laughs> doing what we you know an or idea yeah. that we have and yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. you know we're feeding off each other because of course I mean, you know we're not video directors but we know we have an idea and we want to do this idea um mm. so but um yeah it's been a few different ones uh and some has been the same for a while so they meant a lot to us it helped a lot uh we got one uh specific uh guy matt maitland has been with us and created the sea fox and he's you know he's doing you know amazing yeah job. we're huge fans of him so. right so you guys are still involved with some of the creation process as well and envisioning all of it all of it yes all of it i remember like the first like christian texted me some pictures of like <laughs> 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 you know you you were just past the store look at this man what can yeah. we do here you know that's how it started way before yeah. we contacted wow. anyone yeah it's always this pairing with you know sure sure sea and creatures yeah, and, and specialties. Yeah. something from from the forest <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome yeah um, and kind of I think music promotion and just everything is changing with social media and, and YouTube and all that stuff how much of the creativity or the uniqueness or the virality of a video let's say will go into impacting the success of a song in this day and age um, I don't know I feel like uh, to us they don't really play in this at, you know together like hmm. they might extend extend you know the attention for a song a bit longer depending on when the um, content comes out whatever uh, but i don't feel like it, i mean for us anyway like it was the, 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 the you know the early mtv days where you know when it was so important like a video could make a whole Just song yeah uh, maybe it's still like that but for us the songs have its own life and then we're trying to we're trying to just uh, uh, like the video needs to like uh, represent the song it shouldn't like uh, like th when you listen to it you need to like be focusing on the song and not lose that I yeah. think you know yeah. that's it doesn't have to be like that but that's just works for us it's like uh, and that, that's that's som sometimes a little struggle because uh, a video director might not feel the same way. Mm. They just want to go somewhere and like, uh, then, and then it's like, okay, I feel like you're like focusing on something else now. You're looking at the video and you're not listening to the song and let's try to go and, you know, so it matches. Sure. Uh, but who knows? It says, but uh, we do love making videos and uh, yeah. Cool. Um, so in, in alignment with that, in terms of how everything's changing with social media, what is the formula if you could break down to what you guys think make a su uh, you know, successful song or successful album? Is there some sort of a process that you guys, because you guys have so much experience at this point. What do you mean? Like, uh, I don't know if I understand. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I guess like a mixture of are there specific channels that you guys hit 
that would make it really successful? Uh, what percentage of it is like promotion versus the creative process? Because at least in business, the old um, saying is like, if you have a good product, people will come. Okay, how we put out the album, you mean? Like if there's a way uh, that we we think about it? like um, Yeah, I mean, do you think if it's, do you think the product of the song itself and the quality of the song is gonna make the successful album in the music industry at least? Or is it a lot about promotion in this day and age because there's so much things you can do just to go viral, right? Even though yeah. the song quality might be. I wish it was the, <laughs> the yes, best song one. <laughs> but it's not, you're saying. Because it's the same in business. I think it's the same, you know, yeah. in entrepreneurship and a lot of yeah. factors. But I'm not, I mean, I don't gonna. I'm not gonna go too deep into it like that because it's just it is what it is, mm. right? Um, I just believe in music is gonna find, you know, um, today there's so many uh, outputs, right? So um, for 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 the finding music, I just hope that if you create great music, um, people will find it. But um, it seemed to me a little bit like it was even easier when it was a little raw, you know, in the streaming and, you know, just, uh, uh, and now we're going, taking, you know, little steps back again, where like, yeah. you know, it's uh, again harder for people because like, uh, it's getting a little corporate again. And, uh, you know, people get, you know, sh people, d you know, get it's getting showed like you should listen to this or listen to that. You know, yeah. I felt yeah. like uh, when it was a little bit newer, it was easier for like anyone to just put up music and people just finding it. Mm -hmm. So, but it but is what it is. That, sure. That's always what's going to happen. You know, yeah. so people are just going to try to use it, use it as much as they can. Um, but um, and there's probably uh, like a ton of tricks that we could do to reach out even more. But I'd rather spend the time on the music anyway, Building and then the just product. hope that it's just going to find its way out there, um, yeah. you know. Uh, and then knowing that I did all, I mean, we did all our best mm -hmm. in the studio, on stage, and then that's it. Like, there's always tricks to get bigger or whatever, but if we start focusing on that, we're I think maybe quality of music is going to go sure. down, you know, because we're not focusing on that enough. If you look uh, at statistics too much, you know, you, you're going to end up with not listening with your uh, <laughs> own sure. ears and trust your own ears. Yeah. We could be so <laughs> much better at social media, <laughs> believe me. But, <laughs> like, well, yeah, one day. Yeah. I mean, it's paying <laughs> off. You guys are, you know, I think the first thing that people notice about you guys is, is the uniqueness and the, and the differentiation of, of songs yeah. uh, compared to some of the other ones out there. So, clearly, it's, it's paying off. And you guys... You're just getting started, right? Yeah, but also I feel one, one thing with that, you're you're also getting uh, a, sp a specific type of follower and supporter. Mm -hmm. They're very loyal, and they, uh, I think they really appreciate uh, the the amount of time we spend on on just you know putting our you know writing our songs and the music and 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 maybe they want more of us for the social media, but uh, but. They also they know wha why we're maybe not there all the, all day long, yeah. right? Yeah, all day long. Know? Now. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> so, you you know, uh, but um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's definitely uh, new times. Sure. In, uh, you know, in so many ways, and most of it is just uh, amazing. So, w where do you guys see options? music and even just electronic music as a whole going in the next three to five years with? All these new technologies that are coming out. Well, I think everything is just is going to keep on uh, changing, and um, it depends on. Uh, I mean, I hope it's going to do that, you know. And I hope maybe we need more players to, you know, s start a little bit of. Um, uh, what do you say? Uh, so they can compete, you know, and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, you know, if if one is too big, they can, you know, do yeah. whatever they want. One right. platform, you know. So I think it's good to have a lot of players uh, that gives, uh, I guess, kind of push it forward, and technology will win. And the best way to people want to, you know, uh, consume it's music, good. whatever, is going to win. Because I hope that, it's, you know. But if we look at the past. There's always you can always see that some stuff was amazing and then some bigger player won. Yeah. And that wasn't the best, 
but mm. it won because it was bigger and had more money or something. Sure, you know? sure. It's, it's a Beta Max versus VHS, you know, where like Beta Max was so much better. That's back in the right? day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely lost. Yeah, um, yeah. But sounds but like you guys are about just your your focus is just make really great, unique songs, and the rest will take care of it. So it sounds like that's your yeah, yeah, song. yeah. I think that's. Uh, we're, we, you know, we have to focus what, uh, what we're good at, yeah. you know, and what we know. And then we're enjoying seeing, uh, you know, technology, you know, helping, you know, everyone out to, to try to reach out. I love that anyone can put a song out in, at any moment. Right. That's, that's, that's really beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. That's new. Yeah. yeah completely that's new. Yeah. new. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys starting to do that as well, rather than making, you know, one hit and then just putting that into album, putting out regular ones, kind of like vlogging, I guess, back in the uh, If we, we could, we could put out so much <laughs> music. Yeah. Uh, as we it's do a uh, song so a day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, we also have to have uh, people Alive. that's very uh, good at, like, strategy, telling us, mm. like, maybe not today, <laughs> <laughs> maybe tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or someday. Yeah, 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 that's evolving, I'm sure. Gotcha. Uh, so a couple final questions for you guys. Um, what's a daily non-negotiable routine activity that you guys do every single day? Breakfast. Breakfast. What do you eat for breakfast? <laughs> no, I never. Eat. I wish. Have, I have to. <laughs> I need to because. Yeah, you. Like I get so. He hates me when I don't eat breakfast. So better. You get cranky. <laughs> yeah. What do you yeah. eat for breakfast? Uh, anything, man. That doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> have any do you have we don't have any set activities except no i don't think we do or individually it may it doesn't have to be a part of a group but so breakfast it would is be meditation but meditation yeah, yeah. yeah and do you do it in the mornings i should i should you i should. wish i could say that i do but yeah yeah it's some i mean it's it's uh when you're on tour you're you're always like trying yeah. to keep up with things you know yeah so, yeah. yeah tour is always me tour mm. um, i mean uh when i'm off tour my favorite one is going to the gym and going through new music at the same time that's what i do ah, so a okay. lot of times stay way too long because <laughs> yeah, and i'm like is that am i really working out or am i <laughs> <laughs> just sitting down at one point it's right? like there's always <laughs> someone like are you done with it <laughs> not yet dude um no, but I love that. It's like uh, being at the gym because you're like, uh, you know, you turn off your, you know, everything else. And, and then I just go through, um, you know, Hype Machine or if it's like uh, a new release of Spotify you know, or SoundCloud or mm. like uh, uh, Beatport. Uh, I love that. It's my favorite Beatport, thing. Hype yes, yes, okay. yeah, yes. Listen to new, new stuff, mm. you know, and what, what's, what's out today. And that's yeah. how you get a lot of your inspiration. It's always that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure, it get, gives you that adrenaline rush, you know, that you need to start Very making cool. your own stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's two different things, like listen to music for what you're going to write mm. and what you're going to like play in your set. Mm -hmm. mm. Two different types of lis hearing. Do you guys listen to your own music when you're working out or anything like that? Or well, yeah, all like music? Yeah, your no. own music. Uh, yeah, well, it's if it's brand new. Mm. Like something you did oh, like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the same week. Then yeah. I uh, you listen to it for like two hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same thing, yeah. just repeat. And I actually <laughs> enjoy it, like, you know, well, you most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Cause, like, and I'm making notes all the time, you mm. know. I walk out of the gym, I have like s so many <laughs> notes. Notes so you can change the song? Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. change it. That's one uh, question I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. because I'm in the world of books and software where you have a version, you have a product, but it's always changing, it's always evolving. And that's like a naturally understood concept. So you have a book that comes out and you can change a lot of the versions of it and people accept that. Same with software, it's always changing, not one website, it's gonna be another. Why doesn't that apply to songs? Yeah, we've been talking about this a lot. We want that format where we can change, keep on changing the song. You'd be the first ones to do it because yeah. I don't know anyone else that's done that. That would be amazing. It would be cool for like, a, like someone, like a fan too, like to hear it, and then hear it changing, mm. you know, mm. too. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Especially if you're a huge fan of it. That could be amazing, actually. <laughs> this is a preview. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so people would be like, folks. oh, I love that new song. Like, yeah, what version? Uh, <laughs> no, V1 slash 3.2. We're going to call it growth. <laughs> growth, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could be cool. It would yeah, be, right? Yeah. 
It'd be like, no money, 10. I'm yeah, like, yeah. 10. Like, version 10. You're still yeah. on the 5, <laughs> man. <laughs> and then seeing people I comment, like, no, go yeah. back, go back. Like, yeah, this yeah. is the wrong direction. <laughs> um, Amazing, guys. So one thing that we leave the audience with is one small actionable step that they can take. And these are the people that are listening are creatives, entrepreneurs, artists, and you know they're looking to make that step forward mm -hmm. for their dreams and what they want to do. You guys have had amazing careers, so much experience. And you guys are really just getting started in terms of where you guys are going to be. What is that one actionable step or challenge that these guys can do as soon as they're listening and watching this that would be, you know, helping them take that step forward? Well, I, I, I always say it's, it's a cliche, mm -hmm. but it's true. It's like it's daring to be original and it's very hard, actually. And people think they might be doing that, but they might actually more be listening to other people and other music, and they feel like, oh, I feel like I have something because it sounds like something mm. or it's like similar to something. And I think that's a bad thing. Why are you feeling like you're done just because it sounds like something that's already out? You're already two years behind then, you know? Mm. So it's, it's like... A, and I don't think if they want to do that. It's just something that's very hard to have the confidence to, like, to daring to be original and daring to try something. Because when you are, there's going to be a lot of haters because they don't, what is this? Right. And then they hate on it. And, but that's, I think that's the only way to go, like, to, to, to dare to just um, explore and find what you want to do and not follow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do you know when you have something original? Do you feel nervous? Do you feel almost like self-conscious? And that's is like a feeling you get when you know you have something really original? Yeah, and it's it's very also scary because so, so there's got to be a lot of reactions where where they're like, what what, what is this? Mm. <laughs> what uh, actually yeah. pops up is peanut butter jelly. Yeah, that's 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 good. That's mm. like the first one where like, oh, we can't like, can we go here? <laughs> like, I really want to go here. Like, uh, it was a big like, thing that yeah. DJs started to play it. Yeah. You know, yeah, for us that was like, whoa, they really get it, you know. And we you weren't sure at that. No, no. We thought it was gonna be later, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, can we like build up to this one and they will like, get it? You know, uh, is it? Uh, but I th I'm happy that we stood by it and be like, this is the one we want to do. This one. It's you one know? of my favorite songs. Although oh. the one, with the girls and boys might be like my next one, but cool. <laughs> it's amazing when you thank guys you. Have done. Thanks. So thanks, thanks so much man. for being on, guys. All All right. Right. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. All right. Good. Good. Yeah.